Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless, the podcast that teaches you how to live a healthier lifestyle that makes you and the planet happier. The world is changing quickly. Sometimes it feels like you can't keep up. I hear you. You want to make the world a better place. You care, but you don't know where to start. You know taking care of yourself is important, but how? I get it. I have a history of diving into a new endeavor, seeking perfection, and quickly feeling like I failed. Whether it was going vegan or learning how to recycle more, I wish I had guidance to keep me on track and not overwhelmed. I can't lie, the world needs your help. But it doesn't need you to be perfect. This podcast is here to help. Here we go. Kayla Otto is back this month to help me talk about myths and misconceptions about conscious living. This month... Mindfulness. I think one that comes up in different facets, of course, of conscious living, but one that's interesting for me is when people use mental health stuff and mindfulness where people are like, oh yeah, that would be nice. If I, and I'm like, I sat for five minutes this morning, did some tapping, wrote in my gratitude journal and drank some water. I literally think it was seven <laughs> minutes because I didn't have much time this morning. Yeah. That altered my day. That was seven minutes that set me on the right path. I think there is a lot of it when it, there's something about meditation and mindfulness that really freaks people out. I think you have to pay attention to yourself and that's scary. It's a scary place to be. I get it. Yeah, for sure. That one, I feel like people use a lot of like time restraints where they're like, oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. And that's a tricky one. If someone comes up with that kind of excuse, because We all feel like we need more time in a lot of ways. I totally get that. And then there are some things I try not to even say that anymore because I'm like, I'm on my phone for way too long a day. I have time. Yeah. Choosing to do it in other ways. So I don't believe you don't have five minutes to write three things you're grateful for. I believe you're scared to try it. And having that conversation and not scaring people away, but being honest is where I try and land. I'm not trying to make you feel bad but I also don't totally believe you. <laughs> yeah. Like the five minute, like you're on the bus this morning to go to work right. or you're on the train, take two minutes and focus on your breathing. I think that's another thing that, that people have done is like definitely profited off of trying to get off of the people who want to live more sustainably and also people who just want better mental health yes. or less stress in their life. It's you have to buy this app or this thing that taps on your ankle, or this weird gadget. Sometimes I see these things, and I'm like, what? We'll put that on your body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, $200? That yeah. stressed me out more than the, the stress that this thing could ever take away. Mm-hmm. Truly, I think th- there's, that is another, th- I mean, I guess it's, we just keep coming back to everything being, like, commodified, really, but yeah. there is mental health and mindfulness is, it feels like it's in that boat as well. I know that you and I both talk pretty openly about our journeys with mental health and our, I don't like saying problems, our, I don't know. My mental illness. (laughs) Yeah, I I guess I'm diagnosed, baby. So our mental illnesses. I think people are so scared to say that. If it's like a physical thing, you'd be like, oh, I have the cold. But if it's like a mental thing, we're afraid to be like, oh, I actually have something that I'm struggling with. That's really you're, impacting you're so right. You're so right. Because I just did it. I was just like, what's the word? And if, I, if we would have been talking about endometriosis, I would have thrown that word out 10 times by now. Yeah. Yeah. But you're yeah. so right. There is that like mental illness. I'm more like didn't it's more for me now. I'm like, I don't care claiming that as much as other people get so nervous. Yeah, for sure. Cause it turns it into this big real thing instead of being like, Oh, I'm depressed, but don't worry about it. It's yes. no, this is a real thing that affects my life and it's okay to say that. And I think I would love to hear from you and how that has been like being in this world of trying to change the world, right? Like we both are like, we're going to change the world. We are going to make it better. We believe in this. We want to help others do the same. And I feel like there are a lot of people that I've seen who are in various jobs and positions and do different things that like really their core mission is I'm trying to make this world a better place. And they're Mm -hmm. doing all of that and they are not taking care of themselves at all. 
And I've been guilty of that. I remember trying to bring up in a conversation when I was working as an advocate for survivors of sexual assault and dating violence. I remember bringing up on this big, like we we're planning a big conference, talking about different sessions that could happen. And I was like, what about mental health for the pe- like providers, for yeah. us as advocates? And somebody else was like, is that really needed? Don't people know how to like do that? And I'm, as I'm like twitching, I'm like, I'm barely surviving this grad program, but I'm like, I'm not sure if you notice how tightly I've been clenched this. I'm like, no, that yeah. is so important. And that's why I talk about mindfulness so much too, because I don't think you can try and change the world and, and ignore your own health, mental or physical. I just don't think you can do it. I've burned myself out trying. Yeah, I think people can do it, but it's not going to be as effective as right. you could have been and putting yourself on the back burner. I know people have done that in social justice movements throughout history. And a yep. lot of those people are the people that we remember the most. But yeah, they suffer for it. They do suffer for it. And I guess it's up to each individual. Is it worth it for you? And right. you learned for me that it's not. And so I'll give a brief overview because it's interesting. This is actually tied to su- sustainability too. And veganism, things that we've we've talked about. Exactly. When <laughs> I was in middle school and elementary school, I think we all had hard things to deal with. I definitely was like a little trans kid and getting bullied for gender sometimes. And just the way that I approached the world, like going pescatarian in fifth grade. And so there wasn't anything that was like hugely traumatic in my life, but just being a really sensitive kid. I've always had really deep feelings about everything and have been able to hold conflicting feelings about something at once. Mm -hmm. And so just feeling everything deeply is really hard sometimes. But when I got into high school, I started having really terrible gut issues, stomach Mm. problem. Mm -hmm. And now I know it was from consuming dairy. You're the same. Keep going. (laughs) This will be interesting to see like how much of this overlaps with your real. Sorry. Keep going. Oh my God. I'm like, that's so funny. We are the same. This is why we mesh so well. And I didn't know that at the time. And these gut issues actually introduced depression, anxiety into my life because they're connected to your brain. And then your brain's messed up and it sends signals back to the gut and the gut sends signals back to the brain. And for the first time I was experiencing actual depression and eventually after high school and going to see doctors and all these different things, at times it was like bipolar disorder and different things like that. But it's it got to the point where it was just like being so depressed even though my life was actually okay was just the norm for years Mm -hmm. and I understand why people do feel like they don't want to be alive sometimes Mm -hmm. and and so I think it can give you perspective but it can also feel weird and I almost felt guilty for it for a long time it's I have enough food I have enough water I have friends I can find a job, but sometimes the brain chemistry is just off or something's off in your body or you're living in a world that has lost it and violence is so embedded in our everyday lives. And when you call it out, you're seen as the one who's off or wacky or there's something wrong with you. So a combination of all these things really took my mental health really low and that takes a toll on your physical health. But I will say in the past few years, um, I've gotten off uh, anti-anxiety and depression meds, which is not, I think they're great and they helped me when I needed them. But honestly, like living off grid and living more sustainably, um, like in an earth house that costs only a couple thousand dollars for someone to build and not having all the electronics and the stimulation around me, like the microwave and the refrigerator and a big screen TV and all of these things, reducing that out of my life and being able to see my clear connection to the earth better has boosted my mental health so much. And that's not to say I still don't experience depression or anxiety, but it's not like years. Like there's not, it's not like years without it going away and when I do experience that I feel like I can look clearly at nature and be like 
nature has seasons. Yeah. Right now, for example, the leaves are falling and the everything's going dormant. And not that it's a sad time, but it's a rest period. And I need that too. And it's okay if I'm not on and sunny and bright all the time. And that sounds woo to people, but like when you can get quiet and sit with that, you can give your permission to f- yourself permission to feel all those feelings. Even if it's, I actually can't take it. I feel like I'm being crushed because it's so many at once. You can sit with that better instead of getting on Amazon and buying the thing or um, just watching TV for 24 hours straight. And don't get me wrong. I love a good show. I love zoning out and disassociating, but there's, I feel like it's better for my body and my spirit. And I think part of that just has come through more simple living But the flip side is, which I'll be interested to hear if this has happened to you too, is that when you start to, uh, I think you try to gravitate toward truth more than being right, which has led me to veganism and off-grid living and all of these things. You see the bullshit (laughs) everywhere. And it's just mind-blowing how we've how most of us have been lied to and most of us have fell for it. And then we have to try to get out of that. And then you see other people you still love who are participating in something terrible. And so that takes a huge toll on my mental health now. So I think that's the flip side of it too. The more in line you get with things and your mental health may start to get better, the more you see clearly what's going on around you and then your mental health gets worse. (laughs) Yes. For me, it's still an ongoing balancing act. I don't know what it's like to be a person who doesn't feel everything at once, almost all the time. Wouldn't be me. Heavily. Yeah, I'm like, I think you know what I mean. But I don't think that's the majority of people. And it's taken a therapist to tell me that, to realize that. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, where your story overlaps and if you have noticed that, too, when you've gotten more into a more, I don't know, grounded life that you've Mm -hmm. started to feel. First of all, thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah, Um, I really really appreciate your honesty. And I think that in and of itself is so healing and powerful for people just to have this conversation so freely. I said, oh my God, we're the same because my truly my intro into thinking about myself as connected to the rest of the world I guess I can say probably did start with finding out I was lactose intolerant. Oh my God. I am. I know I was in the beginning of college and it just kept getting worse. I was just like, every time I eat, I feel sick. I'm on like, I'm doubled over in pain. I went to the doctor a bunch of times. They did all these tests and one, they never talked about my mental health Mm -hmm. and any of that connection was like non-existent talk. I now realize I was also dealing with anxiety and probably depression then, but would have never named it that. But finally, I've, I have to give this one to my mom, as hard as that can be for us to do sometimes, <laughs> because all of these things they were talking about and nothing worked. I just felt like shit when I'd eat. And mm-hmm. she was like, yeah, I think you're lactose intolerant. Your dad's side of the family is, and no one wants to admit it. Yeah. Um, nah. But I started taking those like lactate pills Mm -hmm. to the ones that help you digest dairy when I was still doing, because I wasn't thinking about like plant-based or veganism at all. I just didn't want to feel like garbage. But once I started taking those, I could have dairy a little bit more. And I was like, oh, it is that. And Mm -hmm. I was in college at the time that my first year taking sociology and women's studies classes and finding out that I didn't know what it was yet, but I knew I needed to do something in the world that was like helping others. I was like, there's too much. I feel like garbage. There's too much garbage going on in the world. I don't know what it is, but I got to do something, which led me into a whole bunch of like sociology and women's studies and gender violence prevention work for years and years. And that was my mission in life. And it took me a while, a couple of years of realizing that just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's good for you. And I was a really good advocate, but I 
was just like a sponge soaking up everyone's trauma. And I did not have the tools to let it go. And my mental health was just getting worse and worse. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was, it was just bad. It was just bad. It was not sustainable. And I got out. I started to lean away from that work a little bit. I said, I can't deal with taking lactate pills and still feeling like shit. I think I just need to cut dairy. And then I found out about like really dove into plant-based diets. Mm -hmm. And then that was the domino effect for sustainability and mindfulness and everything else. Cause suddenly it became so clear that everything was connected. I was like, Oh, trauma is connected to mindfulness, is connected to the earth, is connected to food, is connected to our bodies. And it just clicked in on such a level that I suddenly realized if I don't take care of myself, I'm not going to make it one. And I'm not going to want, and I'm not going to get to do all the things that I want to do to try and help others. So it just became this, you've got to do something. Like you've got to take care of your mental health or else. Like I wasn't, I didn't have a plan. I wasn't trying to leave the earth, but I remember having thoughts of being like, what if you just, what if I just didn't wake up? Yeah. And as someone who then worked as an advocate, I was having these like dual thoughts where I was like depressed. And then I'd have this voice go, if someone was in your office, like saying that you would be concerned yeah I was like I think I'm at a concerning level yeah (laughs) like I think I think I'm a red flag and getting into therapy changed the game Mm -hmm. like really tackling my mental health and like you said seeing it as I can sit with these things that I don't have to crumble I can have I can get tools I can do all of the things that is why I think I'm able to be here on this podcast and doing coaching and everything else because I'm taking care of my mental health and my own health. It's so corny, but it's like the put on your oxygen mask first. Yeah, it really is. I think if I wouldn't have done that, I'd be working in a job strung out and burned out and not healthy and probably not doing a very good job at helping others at this point. Yeah, for sure. When you don't even have the energy to take care of yourself, how are you going to Mm -hmm. it's that along which I know some people do it and sometimes people have to do it but you're right it's not something you can keep up long term no it's really not I tried (laughs) yeah I'm living proof yeah I am telling you it's not possible (laughs) thank you thank you for sharing that I did not know that was the work that you did before and it makes sense when you said like the human sponge oh my god I know what you mean. It's it hard just led, to be not taking care of that. I was ha- I had coping methods that were like then making everything worse too, right? I was eating shitty food that made me feel bad. Not that I don't love ice cream and chocolate and whatever else. I'm yeah. still eating all of that. It's vegan yeah. now, so it doesn't hurt my stomach. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but like I was doing that. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I do smoke marijuana, which is now public and out there and no one gets to care. Uh yeah. it's legal in Minnesota. But in grad school, I was eating shit food, drinking a bottle of wine in the bath, Mm -hmm. and then just going to bed. And not that there weren't good times, but I see now how much I was struggling to take care of myself and what that did. And I look at that person. I'm proud of her for making it through. There is not a judgment, but I just can see how... I'm so much more myself and so much more like a full human because I started taking care of myself more. Yeah. Can you talk about the ways in which therapy has helped you? Because like I told you before the call, I just started going back to therapy and I've gone through different times in my life. And sometimes it's been a bad situation because I was forced to go as a kid and it was traumatizing. And now as an adult, it's like I can pick where I want to go. I've tried to avoid therapy a lot in my life from having bad experiences with it, totally. but there are some people who have just never gone yep. and it sounds so scary. Can you share with us tools that you've learned or ways that it's helped you in your everyday life? Hey there, it's me. If you're digging this conversation so far around conscious living in this episode and you're feeling inspired to make change, 
That's literally why I'm here. If you want sustainable ways to be sustainable, you hear eco-friendly or green and wonder if you're doing it right. You want to make your diet more earth-friendly by going vegan. You want to live a more connected life, but you're not even sure what that means. No judgment. It is possible to feel excited about making changes to make a difference in the world every single day with your choices, to go vegan and stay vegan without feeling like you're missing anything, or to learn how to make good choices for the planet without feeling stressed. I help folks who are ready to make changes in their life that support their health and the world around them through supportive coaching, practical education, and steps that make you enjoy the process. If that's you, email me at consciouslycarly at gmail.com and let's chat. Back to the episode. Oh my gosh, I, this is tangential and just a toot my own horn for a second, but I'm publishing a short book of poetry this month. Oh, no. I have I have the proof I can show you. Sorry, everyone who's just listening, but my stepdad painted the cover. My goodness. I'll send you one. I would love that. It's so cozy. Thank it's you. Thank so you. Cozy. Yeah. And there's a poem in there called Depression. Mm-hmm. And it talks about how when my therapist first said depression, I was like, I want to fight you. Yeah. That is not my issue. I'm fine with everybody else. I love everybody else getting help and talking about their mental health. And I support you, boo. But that's not what's happening here. I'm just having a bad moment. Right. And so I was resistant to therapy. I'd never had it growing up or anything. Started three years ago because I, or four years ago now, because I was in such a bad place and I didn't know what to do. I was having anxiety attacks. I was just like, I didn't feel in control of my body. And I remember going to the doctor and just having a complete meltdown of I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm at. I don't know what to do. And so they actually brought a therapist in because where I live, the therapists work out of the clinic, which is really nice. So that kind of started that journey. And I was like, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to see. It's fine. She pissed me off at first. And I'm saying this to be honest, because like yeah. I didn't go in there with like sunshine and butterflies, like super ready. I not I wasn't being forced in my head. I knew it was right. But I was also not happy about it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard. No, it's really hard. It's really hard when you're brought up in a world that's like glorifies independence and that as I am in my eyes. I'm a strong woman who can do anything. And I want people to believe that too. And I thought those two things couldn't be together. Right. And now I'm like, I'm a stronger woman because I go to therapy, but that Mm -hmm. took me a bit to get there in terms of like tools and how it actually practically helps. I have a great community of people around me. I have, I'm, I'm close with my parents. I have childhood friends I talk to every day. I have friends I've made an adult, like I have a beautiful community and that's still not necessarily the right people to be talking to about all of this stuff. My best friend from when we were eight years old, she knows everything about me, but she's also going to have a pretty defensive opinion about me. And for sure, like she's, I do have people who I think can be honest and we can have good conversations, but it's still different because I know the way I talk and the way I open up is different with my therapist because she doesn't have any of that. And Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get defensive hearing it from her in the same way I would from my friends and family. If they're like, yo, bro, you're depressed. Yeah. (laughs) That would have really pissed me off from anybody else. And it made me defensive from my therapist, but it's a different relationship. And so just Having tools to get through moments that you're going to have to get through. Because I think sometimes people think like therapy can be helpful in like making everything go away. And it's it's not making anything go away. It's making the things that you are going to have to deal with as a human in this world based on your trauma, based on your X, Y, Z, you're going to have to deal with things. And I have learned how not only to like not avoid hard things, but to how to like face them head on. Mm -hmm. and be okay with things being hard. I think you said at the beginning of this, just being like, okay to sit with stuff, like learning to be okay to sit with stuff and having someone to guide you through that is the most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah. When I need help, I want to go to someone who knows more than me. 
Yes. And, and that sometimes is like an ego blow too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm like, she, this woman, she, this is where she went to school for. Yeah. This, she's like trying to do with her life. So I'm going to trust her to guide me through this. I've had trauma. I'm a survivor of sexual assault and EMDR therapy, the rapid eye movement, the, that stuff. Like that's a tool that I was able to use. So I'm not triggered in the same way. There are practical things I've done in therapy that make me survive situations. And then there are also just mindset shifting conversations that help me see people differently, that help me see the world differently, that help me be okay with things I can't control. Hello, control issues. Oh God. <laughs> like I am saying, <laughs> oh my gosh, I seriously, I could ramble on about therapy. I'll cut myself off that, but it truly is like, I've had some friends be like, I don't know. Is there anything for me to really talk about in therapy? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Are you a human trying to survive 2023? Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. You do not have to have some crazy ass story uh, to go to therapy. You, that's enough. Try right. to survive the day <laughs> is enough. To be, uh, yeah, to be a person in this world, regardless of if you have the most privilege in the world and the least hardship out of anyone it's still hard like to handle human experiences and relationships and cope with things that are much bigger than us and out of our control so thank you for sharing that I think that's going to be so helpful for people and I love that you were just like I was really pissed off I didn't want to hear it because I think therapy is hard like I know some people love going and it's, I love the benefits that I get, but it's really hard for me. It feels really taxing. I don't want to go, uh, but I'm glad I do. Yeah. And for people listening who are like, Oh, maybe I want to try to go. It can be expensive. Yeah. And it's one of those things that can be, but also there are things that you can do. Um, like if you can receive Medicare or Medicaid, for free, um, that can often slash your bill. You can sometimes find therapists online that like just graduated that will do a really small fee. Or you can, if you find a therapist you like, you can ask if they can do a sliding scale. So there, there are ways to make it a little bit more accessible. I, I know that I think you've had them like sponsor you before, like the online services or the yeah. texting services, um, which is not my thing, but I think it does help other people for sure. Yeah. And I like that you identified too. I don't know. Sometimes I think we want everything to be easy. Mm -hmm. Like we've learned that there's like a silver bullet. Like there's like a superfood that'll make us healthy physically <laughs> and yeah. a, a thing that'll do this. And it'll be like, it'll be easy. And I'm like, no, learning about sustainability might be hard sometimes going to yeah. therapy it, it might be hard sometimes that doesn't make it bad. That doesn't yeah. mean avoid it just because it's tricky. And it's, I think some people are like, life is so tricky. I can't add one more thing, but the topics that we're talking about, I think in the long run, make life less tricky and take some work up front and then get easier over time, whether it's veganism or um, meditation and mindfulness and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I hope that people can embrace this more as the holidays come yes. because it can be a stressful time for all of the reasons that we've said. And also, if you are someone like us, the buying stuff overwhelms me. The people eating animals to celebrate love overwhelms me. The being around so many people overwhelms me. There's so many things. So can you talk a little bit about like, other practices that you have that you're going to use coming up besides therapy that maybe are free or that you can do at home and that listeners can do without having to buy anything? So mindfulness practices during the holidays. I actually did a whole series about this for my local radio station for the last couple of years about um, helping people through the holidays when it's hard because there is a lot of pressure particularly during holiday seasons to do things you don't want to do. And sometimes we do things we don't want to do because that's life. And other times we shouldn't, <laughs> right? Yeah. Drawing boundaries 
if that means being around people that have been hard for you to be around in the past, oftentimes we're around family and friends from way back when around this time. And that's not always easy, depending on how you grew up and what that was like. Drawing boundaries and not feeling bad about them, if you can. Do your best to be proud of yourself for taking care of yourself instead of feeling bad like you're making others feel bad. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a hard, that's a hard line. That's a practice, but I think drawing boundaries for what's going to feel best for you to get you through the holiday season can help your mental health a lot. Like, can you not be around uncle Tommy? Okay. That might be hard yeah. for your mom, but, or whatever it is, yeah. like you can draw that boundary for your mental health. I, I, that's just, I know that's like a little bit different probably than the question you were asking, but no. I just, I think that's a big one and having a plan. If you are going to have to go to an event or be around people that, you know, this is going to be stressful. This I'm going, I've accepted I'm going, but this is going to be hard. Tell a friend I'm going to be here at this time to this time. Are you available at seven Oh five to have a conversation, have something in place So you feel supported if you're going to do something this holiday season that is going to stress you out. That's not maybe harming your mental health, but you know, will cause some anxiety. Mm -hmm. Do you have that person or those people in your life to lean on, to ask for support? That's something I've gotten better at in the last few years is actually saying, I need this right now. Yeah. You Can you give that to me? That's really important. In terms of just like practices for myself, I really encourage people to find a, I think morning, but evening or whatever routine that nourishes you. If it's five minutes, if it's 15 minutes, if you like to dance, if you like to read, if you, I don't know what it is, the thing that brings you joy. My morning routine right now looks like water, gratitude journal, some tapping or some sort of physical practice. And then I've been turning on music like really loudly at you know 645 or whatever time it is when I'm ready for this part and either just dancing or letting that kind of just start a good energy day. If you can find something you do consistently that you start to look forward to and that you start to use as your time, don't underestimate what that can do for your mental health, especially during holiday season, when we're all going to start to be more and more stressed, that's the time where it feels like you should drop the routine because you're too busy. And don't, don't give up on self-care during times of stress and during holiday season, because all of a sudden it's January and you are like this close to breaking. (laughs) Yeah. That's when you need it most. Yeah. And that's the times we let it slip for sure. Cause it feels hard, but There is something rewarding and so worthwhile to continue to try and do whatever that looks like for you. It does not have to look like what mine does, but whatever practice you can do that's just intentionally taking care of you. Maybe it's a slow breakfast. Maybe it's making sure you have at least a good meal before you leave the house. Whatever it is that you're treating yourself to, don't stop doing that ever, (laughs) but especially during the holidays. That's so funny. You were talking about all these things. Like when you're like, I'll take some time to turn on loud music. I was in my head. I thought turn on loud music and scream. And you were like, dance. And then you said, if you need to take time in the morning, I thought literally thought to scream. That shows you where my head's at. But also if you need that time to do that, scream into a pillow, do something like that is, that's part of it too. Whatever comes up. A hundred percent. Whatever comes up. I love shaking meditations and dancing dancing is one of the dancing and singing for me feel like ways that help my body release that are like unmatched Mm -hmm. in in a lot of other ways and so whether you're like dancing to 90s hip-hop and shaking it and grooving like that's great love that or Mm -hmm. you're like listening to punk and you're just like thrashing around and you're (laughs) screaming into a pillow like just let your body move yeah if that's something that like feels good, I've been thinking about doing another session, a call on for Patreon for my group of folks on Patreon. We've done some shaking meditation, like full moon ceremonies before. And I've been calling, feeling called to do that again, because I've been relying on it. Like I 
just need to get this out of my body. It's so overwhelming. I asked my partner to shake me. I'm like, I need shook. <laughs> Please shake me. Shake my ears and my shoulders yeah. and every like my hips. Everything needs to be shook. And yeah. it, it helps. It really helps. Yeah. Again, like full circle in this conversation. It's all like a return to things that are more inherent and more primal for us, right? Whether it's sustainable living, whether it's shaking and moving your body to get out things that don't feel good. Like those are all really like primal ancient exercises that Mm -hmm. we've lost and Mm -hmm. they're simple and they don't cost any money for you to turn music on and thrash around, but I guarantee you, you'll feel better. Yes. I love how that came full circle. That was absolutely perfect. Put a little bow on that. (laughs) Yeah. Are there any practices you rely on consistently like that right now? I really like to swim. Something about feeling like I can move really easily through the water, no matter how I'm feeling. Because sometimes if I run while I'm already charged, I'm like giving myself a panic attack. And there's a simple exercise that a friend taught me where you stick your arms out straight in front of you. You interlace your fingers. You Yeah, you turn your hands over, interlace your fingers and pull your hands towards your heart. And I close my eyes and count to 180 because I have a really hard time. If something bothered me, I can't stop thinking about it. And most things that bother me, there will never be resolved to. And so just by counting and breathing, I can usually turn my focus elsewhere. And then that's when, for me, a great shaking comes in or swimming or writing in my journal. Then I can actually do that without just this one thing. I can't break through it. Yeah, that's really helpful for me. And the shaking, the breathing. And yeah, breath work. Yeah. That's a whole nother podcast episode. Oh we, my God. Yeah. We just walk around all day with this tool that we didn't learn how to optimize and use. Even though we have to do it. Even though we're breathing. <laughs> yeah, even though we're breathing all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it for me. It changes sometimes, but... It's how it is lately. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode of Consciously Clueless. And for that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or tag me and share in social media. Share this episode with others who may be interested in this topic. To get more resources, influence on topics covered, and bonus content, join the Consciously Clueless community over on Patreon at patreon.com slash consciouslycarly. And don't forget, if you need help living more consciously, let's work together. Email me today. See you next Wednesday for a new episode.